you'll be able to touch a lot of people and not even people that are just going to prison. This is life lessons that anybody could take value from. Anybody that's going through a tough time can relate to others going through a tough time. But if you let people know the struggle that you're having in your personal life and what you're doing to improve that struggle, now you're relating to 99% of the world. And when we do things for the right reason and we see all of these other amazing, beautiful things happen, it's, it's really why I do this. And it's why I'm so proud that you're doing this video with me today because it means so much to so many people that I can reach now because of you. So thank you. So the impact of you going through all of this, are there any rough patches in your life that you feel were caused partly because of this, or at least this had an effect on some decisions that you may have made? Because this all happened when I was starting middle school, which is like a hard three years. Um, I definitely made a lot of bad decisions because, you know, the hormones and you know, my dad's in jail and I was stealing a lot and I wasn't really like thinking about the consequences. Like I was doing drugs, smoking weed, smoking cigarettes. And that was kind of how I dealt with it then. But once I, once I like got out of eighth grade and into high school, I started realizing that it, you going to prison doesn't, change everything um, stealing and trying to smoke pot and things like this do you think it was easier for you to justify doing it saying well i'm angry my dad went to prison so i'm going to go and do these things if it did play any role in helping you justify making those decisions those poor decisions what would you tell somebody that's watching this right now that maybe their father's either just getting ready to go to prison or their mother or they're already in prison and you think they might be having these same type of ideas where they're going to go out and do stupid things. What is some advice you'd give a young teenager so that maybe they won't make those same choices? Stealing and doing drugs does not help anyone. If anything, it just makes the situation worse because me and my mom had a really good relationship until I started stealing. And then once I got caught, we kind of like how we were very distant towards each other and things were really uncomfortable because I didn't like to talk about it and she didn't really like to talk about it and I was doing a lot of of these RSAs and essays all the time on <laughs> what I why I did was wrong and I don't know it's just it's not worth it to throw your life away at such a young age because of something that's temporary what were some of the consequences that happened to you from making these choices? Uh, I got sent to Ohio. What's in Ohio? Grandfather. So you had to go live with your grandfather in Ohio for how long? Uh, like four months. Four months. And what did that feel like at the time? It was awful. I was, I was about to finish eighth grade. And I was going to go to high school with my, my best friend. And then the day I got sent to Ohio, I found out that I didn't get into the high school I wanted because I was not going to school. I was skipping school to smoke weed. And when I got to Ohio, I didn't, I didn't relate to anyone there because everyone was, they were just not the kind of people I was used to being around, used to talking to. And I didn't have many friends. I wasn't social. I was doing a lot of yard work. 
and homework and studying and had to pass my classes so I could move back to New York. And then I got in trouble again while I was there for smoking weed. And I had no phone for the last two months I was there. And then I cleaned up my act and I got to come back and I was definitely doing much better after that. So at the time when you had to go to Ohio, and if I remember correctly, because I had just gotten released, I was still, I think I was either living in the federal halfway house or I was on home confinement, one of the two. I don't think you had much notice that you were moving to Ohio. How much notice were you given? I didn't know until the day it happened. My grandpa had came to visit us for the weekend just to like stop by. And then I came home from my mom's boyfriend's house and my grandpa was like, we packed your things. Let's go. Like, okay. What went through your mind in that moment? Well, I was really, really sick and I was, I was just really confused. I was really upset. And my sister was really upset because she also had to keep it a secret for a while. And like everyone was crying. And I was really upset because I wasn't going to be able to see like my best friend for, I thought it was only going to be like maybe a month. So I wasn't that upset. And then I found out that it was until school ended and I was, I was just not dealing with it well. Did you feel like you had lost control? Yeah, I felt like, yeah, I felt like I had no control over my life. Did you feel like it was fair, unfair? At that moment, I thought that it was unfair. I hated everyone. I was like, how, how could you do this to me? Like, I didn't do anything wrong. So if somebody would have said to you at, in that moment, if somebody would have said to you, oh my God, you have to go live with your grandfather, how come? What did you do? What, what do you think you would have said in that heat of the moment? I would have, I would have probably like rolled my eyes and been like, because I skipped school. And that definitely was not the reason. But I was, I was so like naive. And I was, I was like, I'm not doing anything wrong. Like I'm just doing what regular teenagers do. The reason why I'm asking you about this, Lauren, because your reasoning at that moment and your thought process in that moment and the, and the fact that control has just been completely taken from you, you're helpless in that moment because you're going. There's nothing that's going to prevent you from not going. It's not that different from when individuals like myself first become wrapped up in the federal government or state or whatever. When you realize how serious it is and all of a sudden everything's taken from you and you're going to prison, there's a part of your mind that goes to this fight or flight. You're just literally backed into a corner and you would do anything to not go. Getting people to accept the reality of the state of mind that they're in and take accountability, it's not as easy as it sounds. Because if it were, you wouldn't have went through what you went through. But what you experienced it's not that different from what I experienced. Now, obviously, my mind carries consequences that will follow me for the rest of my life. I'm a convicted felon. But that moment of what you go through is exactly the same. You have no control. So the consequences, right? Focusing on those consequences. Lauren talked about RSAs earlier. Um, for those of you that are like, what the hell's an RSA? RSAs, are, it's, it's a rational self-analysis and in RDAP, in the Residential Drug Abuse Program in prison, you have to do what's called an RSA. RSAs are basically breaking down your, what happened, how you felt about it, and what you could have done differently to avoid that situation from happening. So the whole point of the RSA is when you make these mistakes, you can go do an RSA to really identify what made these events happen. And Lauren had to do those for a while. Probably we should all be doing them every day because it as much of the pain in the ass as they are, it does keep you in, in the moment. But I had something I learned from RDAP and I wanted to pass it on to my kids. And of course they hated them. I don't blame them. I hated them when I had to first do them. But I never really looked at Lauren's situation like this until today. Uh, it wasn't that different than my situation. Um, she made some series of bad choices and they caught up with her. 
Harvey showed up, your grandfather, in my situation, the federal government showed up and took all my rights away and said, we don't care what you want to do, you're going. And you have no say over the matter, and that's the way it is. Uh, in some situations, yours might have been worse because you had, you had no foresight that it was coming. It was just, boom, you're gone. Um, in the same way, that might be almost better because the anticipation of going could have been pretty dreadful as well. Uh, you might have actually ran away. That's probably why they didn't tell you. Yeah, they didn't tell me. Looking back, do you think there was any value in you going to Ohio to live with uh, your, your grandpa? I, I definitely did learn something from all of that. I, I don't want to go through that again. But what did, you, what did you take away from it as far as the consequences? What changed from you going to Ohio versus, not, versus coming home? What do you do different now in your life so you don't have to go back to Ohio? Um, I go to school. I don't go to school high. I don't steal. I try to control my emotions a lot better. I take medicines for for my like ADHD, my anxieties and stuff. I I just I try to stay on top of my myself. So you're holding yourself more accountable. You're focusing on consequences. Because, I mean, who doesn't want to get high all day long, right? Who doesn't want to go do things that we shouldn't be doing? Doesn't mean we don't want to do them. Doesn't mean you're a bad person because you think about stealing or you think about using drugs. Uh, the reality is, is you've learned a lesson from what happens if you just do things the way you want to do them and avoid consequences. So I think what you learned from it, from what I'm hearing you say, is... Just because you don't do those things don't, doesn't mean that you don't still have urges. You've just found a way to control not being compulsive and thinking about what you do before you do it. That's really what an RSA is. It's focusing on consequences and then thinking about those consequences. And if you're not willing to live with those consequences, you don't do it. If you're willing to live with the consequences, then it might be a good choice for you. Adults and parents that are listening to this, you guys should be taking heed of this too. This isn't just, don't, don't dismiss this because she's 17 years old. These are lessons that she's learning that anybody could take advice from. Uh, how do you feel, Lauren, that now that you're putting yourself out there in a the spotlight and you know people are going to want to see more videos from you, they're going to want to see more engagement from you how you're progressing through life and how it's helping others. A lot of people are probably going to turn to you for not just advice, but they're going to turn to you to watch. People are going to be paying attention to what you're doing. And when you do make mistakes, when you do slip up, people are going to notice it. Do you feel nervous by the level of accountability that you have to hold yourself to now, knowing that other people are going to count on you doing the right thing? Um, that makes me a little bit nervous. How come? Uh just because I, I'm not used to having like so many people um, like pay attention to what I'm doing and make sure that I'm like doing the right thing. But at the same time, I'm not doing anything that's like, you know, you're going to go to prison if you do this. So I'm, I'm worried in the sense that I'm just not used to it yet. You know, change is hard. Doing anything that you're not used to creates an unsetting mindset to where sometimes you just don't want to do it. It's because you're not comfortable. You're embarrassed by it. When you take yourself out of your comfort zone and you start doing things that are uncomfortable, it creates new habits that now you're holding yourself to a higher standard, which means people are going to see you in a higher standard. And I think it's part of progression. It's part of growing up. It's be part of not just becoming an adult, but becoming a responsible human being. I don't want to use the word adult because there's plenty of adults that are not responsible. Uh, human being, a person that makes good choices and decisions and is willing to make others aware is really taking on a whole new level of responsibility. What makes this a unique experience for me, and I, I hope I can offer this to you or those of you that are watching, you have to be willing to show people all sides of you, your flaws and the pros and cons out of your life. Everyone's going to be watching you, babe. They're going to want to know when you have good days, when you have bad days. And most importantly, what do you do when you have a bad day? 
And if you can accept that reality, get back on and make and not make the same mistake over and over again, learn from your mistakes, you'll be able to touch a lot of people and not even people that are just going to prison. This is life lessons that anybody could take value from. Anybody that's going through a tough time can relate to others going through a tough time. But if you let people know the struggle that you're having in your personal life and what you're doing to improve that struggle, now you're relating to 99% of the world. So that's why I've encouraged you to do this is I know that it will help others and I know that it will also help you. And when we do things for the right reason and we see all of these other amazing, beautiful things happen, it's, it's really why I do this and it's why I'm so proud that you're doing this video with me today because it means so much to so many people that I can reach now because of you. So thank you. My daughter tells me I'm a big softy. <laughs> so what are some things that you can leave with parents and children that are going through one of the toughest periods of their life, whether it be prison or anything that may be extremely rough in their current life? What is something that you'd want to leave them with? I would, I would just say to try to talk about it as much as you can. No matter how uncomfortable it is, it helps with learning how to deal with it and moving forward instead of having to come back to it after finding out that maybe you didn't know everything that was going on and then you have to have the whole conversation over again. It's easier to just try to get everything out in the open as as soon as you can try to be as honest as possible update your family on what's going on whenever when you know when you're gonna have to turn yourself in try to prepare your kids for that because it, it is hard to hear for the first time be as communicative talk as much as you can about it and you're okay with people emailing you, asking you questions about their situation and some advice possibly? Of course. Of course. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you today. I really wanted to introduce you to Lauren, who is going to be working with me and a lot of our clients and their children. She's more than willing for you guys to reach out to her. And I know many of you are going to be asking for Lauren to have her own YouTube channel. So that might be something that Lauren wants to get into as she sees this progress. I have a feeling she's going to enjoy this much more than she originally anticipated. So reach out to Lauren if you want. It's Lauren at ArtAppDan.com. Uh, if you want to talk to Lauren, just send her an email and she will provide you with a phone number to where you can reach her. All right, Lauren, I appreciate it. I love you so much. Thank you for helping me today. Guys, I'm Ardap Dan, Federal Prison Time Consulting, People Helping People, Communities Method, one day at a time. Peace. <laughs>